The Curse of La Llorona follows Anna, and she is a single mother and a social worker. And she gets pulled into a case and where on the surface we think it's a, a case of child abuse. As she digs deeper, we realize that it's something much more sinister. And the deeper she gets into the case, um, she starts to uncover that behind it is La Llorona, this terrifying supernatural spirit that has existed for hundreds of years. And she has descended on Los Angeles, and now she is turning her attention to Anna and her children. Mickey and Tobias wrote a, an awesome draft. They, um, they really had, the characters were already you know, really well developed, and you know, Anna's story was already very sympathetic. Um, and it was also really scary. There's already these great scare sequences that have been built in, and you know, New Line has a really great knack and understanding for that, you know, how to um, you know, design for sequences that are gonna be memorable and iconic. Um, and, you know, I feel I was really lucky to, to join the project. I thought the script was in a great place. As we were researching the film, we, we met with a, a lot of people who grew up with the legend, you know, whose abuelas told them this story. We met with a lot of abuelas. We also met with a lot of curanderos, and they told us their versions of it. And, you know, also we even uh, approached them about how you would deal with, with La Llorona, because that is a, um, that's something that Ray is brought into, and uh, he's a curandero, and he needs to help Anna lift this curse and defeat La Llorona. What's amazing is, especially if you live in Los Angeles, there is a Corandero probably a mile away from here, a mile away from wherever you are. They are everywhere. And they're really fascinating guys. They are faith healers, medicine men, and you know, beyond that, each one has such a unique personality. They're you know, members of the community, and you know, each one you could make a story out of, uh, out of all of them. And you know, they definitely helped you know, inspire and shape um, Raymond's performance and definitely what we were thinking about with, uh, with the way he took the role. Linda plays Anna in the film and she's a social worker and a single mother and you know in the the story we always wanted an outsider we always wanted someone who had not grown up with the the myth and so they're coming at it with from a place of discovery because I think that that is it's a fun place to be in whenever you're discovering something in a movie that is you know that's a you know a great place to be. Linda's incredible. She has such an incredible range. And to honestly, you know, I was a fan of hers in Freaks and Geeks. And to be able to see her come all this way in, in Mad Men and then now in this, it is just really incredible. I, I, I was so impressed by what she brought to the role. Um, incredible actor. Really, really captured that mama bear quality. You know, that is, that's, you know, this is a story about mothers. There's, you know, three different mothers in this story, and she's one of them. And she really, she, you really buy it, and you really buy the, uh, the fire beneath it. Raymond is awesome. You know, one of the things that I definitely wanted with Raphael is I wanted a character that was dangerous, someone that you weren't sure if you could trust, because that is one of the, the leaps of faith that Anna takes in the movie. And I think it's also fun for, you know, to have that, char that type of character in a movie. So going into it, one of the things that I loved about Raymond is, his, uh, is Tuco, Tuco from Breaking Bad. You know, that's a character, and this is, this is definitely not Tuco, but there was an element of that wildness, that danger, that recklessness that I thought that, you know, he really captured there, and he brings in elements of that, that kind of dangerous quality, and he killed it. Beyond that, he's a great guy. He's become a friend of mine and really a, uh, a solid character. Patricia was incredible. I've been a fan of hers since The Mummy uh, for, for so long, and she really knocked it out of the park in this role. It's a really dark role. It's a really harrowing role, and she really captures that. This is, um, this is a, a woman who is losing her kids, and it, uh, she really captured the emotion and the darkness of that, and I think that that's one of the, one of the things that really anchors the film. James is the best. I've been a fan of James for years. And so to have an opportunity to collaborate with him, to work with him, was a dream come true. He is an amazing director and incredible producer. And he was just great and so insightful at every st step of the process. You know, when we're developing the script, you know, he had such, you know, great insights and specifics into what's, what's the story about and really, you know, what is the story that you, you really want to tell and what do audiences really want to see. And, you know, when we were making the monster as you were developing it, you know, this was, it was a dream come true. You know, that's like, you know, you're working with a, one of the best 
monster makers that exist today. He's created so many iconic monsters from so many iconic movies. To be able to bounce ideas off of him and just, you know, uh, you know, work with him was was so cool. You definitely, you know, make the uh, the movie with your team. I think that that was something that. Uh, you know, you, you try and, you know, inspire them and then, you know, guide them with a lookbook and, you know, references. But, you know, you definitely, you want to see what they can bring to the project. And, you know, the more freedom you give them, the more you empower the people that, you know, are on your team. I think the better the results. So they knocked it out of the park. They brought so much great stuff to the table, so many great ideas. And um, I think the movie has this great, vibrant look to it. And I think it's really because you know, because of all those guys. The house was in uh, mid-city, and it was a great, a great old house. And it was actually, um, we shot in the, uh, the bottom floor, and the top floor was occupied by, um, by three students who were going to USC, and they live there. And um, we are pretty convinced, and we were to told by the owner, and um, we learned from uh, some of our crew members that the house is haunted. And, um, it, uh, I thought it was totally a joke, but so many people had so many odd occurrences in there. I never experienced any of it, but you know, the um, our homeowner was um, was convinced that it, it was haunted, and he had heard that from the girls that that lived there. Um, there was other crew members who said they had heard things or said they heard whispers, and you know, it always came secondhand and. Um, Again, you know, I was the first one to say, like, ah, oh, that's garbage. But then I was also, you know, definitely very nervous. And, you know, whenever I was by myself, I was always kind of checking the corners.